What up, everybody? BMF Season 3, Episode 1. Meech met his new crew that he's going to be rolling with in Atlanta. Three guys who moved down to Atlanta before Meech and had been working with Ty Washington prior to Meech. He was also introduced to Ty Washington's wife's uncle, a guy named Stax, who was from Atlanta. And he was the one connected to all of Ty Washington's distros in the Atlanta area. Stax was wearing Ty Washington's chain. And when Meech asked about it, Stax told Meech that Ty was like a nephew to him. Then Meech told Stax that Ty was like a brother to him. This particular line left a lot of people confused on why Meech would say that. But we got to keep in mind that Ty Washington was originally from the D and moved to Atlanta and set up shop there before Meech and T. So most likely they all grew up together. And this is why in season two, when Ty introduced Meech and T to his wife, she said Ty said y'all were like brothers to him. Also keep in mind that Meech and T stayed at his house. This also shows how close they were at one point because Ty wouldn't let just anybody he barely knew stay at his house around his wife and children. Stax was an honorary member of the Detroiters. The three guys from Detroit who were already living in Atlanta, already working with Ty Washington, was a guy named Duffy, who was also a music producer, who is connected to Sterling Black. He said Sterling was like family. A guy named Diesel who said he was Detroit born and bred. And a young hustler and rapper named Rip. Meech was so impressed by Rip's rapping skills that he told him once he blows up in music to leave the street life alone for good. Rip was also the same guy who was shot later in the episode when bringing Meech the money bag by two of Remy Ransom's Techwood hitters. Now I've heard a lot of people in my comments over the last few days saying that Rip is Blue Da Vinci. So I want to take a second out of this video to clear that up. We still haven't got to the point in the timeline where Meech meets Blue Da Vinci. I'm not sure of the exact year when Meech meets Blue, but I don't believe it's until the mid-90s at the earliest. And of course, they could have changed a few things around and introduced Blue to the timeline a little earlier. I do understand that, but Rip is still not Blue. Second, Blue is from LA and Rip is from Detroit. And Meech also met Blue while living in LA during a drought looking for a new plug. That's the thing about BMF. We're going to see Meech maneuvering all over the map into multiple cities to either set up shop or set up hubs. So basically, what is going to happen is that the Colombian Coke connection coming in through Miami is going to dry up as the feds start cracking down on the drugs being imported on the East Coast. Specifically in 1993 is when the feds closed in on Pablo Escobar and killed him in a shootout. So up until this point, Pablo Escobar was the biggest drug deal in the world, including the current BMF timeline. So his death in 1993 will really start to shake things up for BMF. Right now, the timeline is most likely around the early 1990. It's said that Atlanta won the bid to host the 1996 Olympics in 1990. So we definitely know that it's past 1990. But not by that much. Season 1 told us that the timeline was somewhere in the mid-1980s. Then Season 2 started off saying that it was in the late 1980s. But Season 3 didn't start off by giving us any specific information concerning the current timeline. Other than letting us know that Atlanta won the bid for the Olympics in 1990. So just keeping up with the current pattern, we can just guess that it is currently in the early 1990s. So if I had to guess, most likely by the end of season three, we're going to start seeing a lot of drug busts happening and a lot of things being switched up on BMF as well. One thing that we could definitely also ask is, because the fact they're switching most everybody besides the Flannery family and Roland West's names, is Cena Pablo Escobar or somebody that was closely connected to him? Because we do know that Cena is highly connected to be able to have those 300 kilos waiting for Meech and T when they got back to Detroit. And we also know that Cena is Colombian. If Cena doesn't represent Escobar, he most likely represents a high-ranking member of the Medellin cartel ran by Escobar. Because keep in mind that K-9 owed Cena $20 million. So Cena got to be somebody powerful, being able to let somebody run up a tab for 20 mil and still not really being touched by it financially. So if Cena is not portraying Pablo Escobar, will he be a key government informant to taking Escobar down? In episode one, Sterling questioned T about K-9 being locked up 
and that he was ratting. But T wasn't worried about K-9 snitching on him or Meech because K-9 let them live after taking his connect. And this is true. When Brian and Jim were questioning K-9, he gave up a whole bunch of names but refused to say anything about the Flannery brothers. I guess even in snitching, K-9 was sticking to some kind of twisted principles. Keep in mind it was K-9 who taught Meech about family, trust, and loyalty. But one thing we also have to remember is that Meech met Sterling through K-9. And Meech knew Sterling was someone he could trust from the jump because the fact that K-9 trusted Sterling enough to allow him to have weapons at his gambling spot. But at the same time, because the fact that Sterling did somewhat betray K-9 with Meech, this doesn't mean that K-9 won't snitch on Sterling Black. So the Sterling Black angle will be one to keep an eye on this season, especially after what went down in episode 1 and the secret between him and T letting everyone think that T killed Saint. Getting me back to Cena, one person we definitely know for sure that K-9 snitched on was his Colombian connect Cena. So either though K-9 didn't snitch on Meech and T directly, he did snitch on their plug, which will cause BMF to have to take that hit eventually. So we know that the timeline is in the early 1990s and Pablo Escobar goes down in 1993. So could K-9 be the key to taking down Pablo Escobar? Whether Cena is portraying Escobar or not, if K-9 causes Cena to go down, Cena might also decide to cooperate with the government and help them know the whereabouts of his boss and take down Escobar. So once all that goes down, Meech and T will be left without a plug. This will cause Meech to move to California, and while there will be when Meech meets Blue Da Vinci. He also connects in L.A. with a guy named Wayne Joyner. Then, after some time in California and going without a plug, pretty much out of the game for a while, Joyner will meet a man that goes by Green Eyes, who he was buying some weed from. It just so happened that Green Eyes had ties to a Mexican cartel, and the next thing that happened, Meech had 3,000 kilos coming to him. So think about what Meech and T were getting through Cena. Their first re-up was 300 keys. Then their second was 500 keys. They'll probably continue to get those 500 keys consistently until Cena goes down and the Colombian plugs are dried up. So BMF will get 10 times more weight through their new Mexican plug than they got through Cena. It was never said who their plug actually was at that time either, simply because the fact that Meech and T aren't rats. But it was at this point in time when BMF became the largest drug operation in the U.S. And before I go, something also to keep in mind is the fact that the Miami Killers, who are Meech's biggest competitors trying to take control of the Atlanta area, also have a Colombian connect. And their big advantage is being stationed in Miami, where all the cocaine was coming in at during that time. So when the bus start going down and the southeast dries up, it's going to cause problems for the Miami Killers also who is based off the real-life group, the Miami Boys. And based on the research I did on the Miami Boys, they stay relevant until 1999 when their leader gets sent to prison for life. And there you have it. Leave your thoughts, theories, and predictions in the comments.